All right, let's talk about local behavior for polynomial functions. So local behavior is not what happens at the extremes like n behavior is. n behavior is like what happens with these tails if they go down or they go up at the extremes. Instead, local behavior is referring to what's happening on the inside, um, not as we go to infinity or negative infinity. All right, so some different characteristics. We have turning points. Turning points is when our graph changes from increasing to decreasing or we get another at the bottom here where we change from decreasing to increasing. You can think of these as being maximums or minimums in a relative sense. The next thing we can mention for local behavior is our y-intercept. The y-intercept is gonna occur whenever our x value is equal to zero. And every one of these polynomial functions is gonna have a y-intercept. X-intercepts, these are when the function itself equals zero or when our y-value is equal to zero kind of defined in this next box for you. Um, another thing that should be mentioned here is x-intercepts. Whenever you use that terminology, it means the same thing as zeros or roots. So for our purposes, we can think of x-intercepts, zeros, and roots as basically being interchangeable. They're points on our graph that are on the x-axis. So let's use this as well as this next theorem that we get. And this theorem is connecting together x-intercepts to our graph or roots or zeros with factors, okay? So if you know an x-intercept or root or zero, you can get a factor that goes hand in hand with that. It's always x minus whatever the zero or root or x-intercept is given to you. All right, so if you have an x-intercept or root or zero, you get a factor that goes with it. This is also referred to as an if and only if statement. If and only if, because basically you can start with either side. If you're given the zero, you can get a factor. Or if we have a factor given to us, we can work backwards and we can get a zero that goes with it. Let's try doing that with this next problem. So on this problem, we're given a polynomial function. It's not multiplied out, but it would be a degree two polynomial. Let's pick out the zeros of this polynomial. All right, so how I like doing this is it's already factored for us, which is very nice. What we can do is we can look and here's an X, goes along with this factor X minus two. So I visualized to myself, what would I have to plug in for this X to make this factor equal zero? So if I plugged in a two, two minus two would make a zero. So two becomes a zero for this polynomial. And think about it, if you plugged in a two, this factor becomes zero and it's multiplied by everything else on this side. So zero times anything is gonna be zero. For this other factor, we have X plus three. Well, if we plugged in a negative three in for this X, it would make this factor equal zero, therefore the entire function. The other way you can kind of go about these is if you went and set the factor equal to zero and solve this down by subtracting three from both sides, you would also get X equals negative three. This method, is particularly helpful if you had a different um, coefficient going on here instead of just one X, that would say two X plus three. If you set two X plus three equal to zero, work an extra step there, you would be able to solve down and get X all by itself. You'll make less mistakes if you set those equal to zero and do this as side work to pick out your zeros, all right? Very similar problem on this next one, but it's kind of working the opposite direction. We're given zeros this time and told that it has to be a degree three polynomial. And we wanna come up with the polynomial. I'm also going ahead and including this extra piece of information that we know the y-intercept is gonna be at zero comma 10. So with this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna list out, we know our zeros are gonna be at negative three, positive two, and five. So let's try to come up with the polynomial. And remember, it always goes as X minus whatever the zero is for your factor, referring back to our theorem up at the top. All right, so our polynomial has a negative three as a zero. That tells us that the factor that goes hand in hand with that is gonna be X minus a negative three. Or in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say X plus three. If two is a zero, X minus two, has to be a factor. And if five is a zero, X minus five has to be a factor. 
And we can kind of double check this by saying if I plug the five in for this X, five minus five makes zero. Therefore, this whole factor equals zero. Therefore, our entire function is gonna equal zero. Same thing with our two here and our negative three going in for this X. Now, the thing that we haven't taken into account here is one, the degree. Well, each one of these has a, what we refer to as a multiplicity of one. So if you add these multiplicities of one together, one plus one plus one adds up to three. It'll be a degree three polynomial. But the other thing to be careful of is in this one, I specified a y-intercept of zero, 10. So what that tells us is if we say this is our function, I'm just calling it f of x, we could have some sort of stretch or compression going on out here, maybe a reflection that um, is going to affect making sure that we hit this y-intercept. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this as my x value of zero and then an f of x or y value of 10. And I'm going to fill into our function. So I'm going to fill in 10 for f of x equals a times zero goes in for x, zero again goes in for x, and zero for that one in x as well. Now what we've done is we've created an equation that only has one unknown. We don't know what a is yet, so we have to do a little bit of algebra to solve down for a. So what I'm going to do first is we know that zero plus three is three, zero minus two is negative two, and zero minus five is negative five. If I multiply all those constants together on the right hand side, I'm going to get a positive 30. So a multiplied by positive 30 to get a all by itself and to solve for it, we'll divide both sides by a. So that gives us a equals with a little reducing down one third. Therefore, the function that we're trying to go for, and we're going to leave it in factored form, is I'm going to plug that value for a that we just found back up in where a was in the factored form. So one third multiplied by x plus three, multiplied by x minus two, multiplied by x minus five, and that's a good function, uh, the polynomial that has the given zeros and the y-intercept that we were looking for. All right, hope this helps out as you're trying to build up polynomials based on zeros um, and a y-intercept. Good luck.